country have taken up, and we are all in markets where the dropout crisis is most acute. And uh, so I don't need to tell you guys that we, um, we do have that problem here in New Mexico. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, give you a brief overview of what it is we're trying to do in the community. Basically, we want to highlight what's working and make sure that we can tell the right stories, the stories that the community thinks they want to hear, and um, that point out what the, some of the solutions are so that they can be replicated in other places. One of our first pieces of content was uh, about citizen schools, which is definitely a... Uh, one of our solutions, uh, extended day learning, is definitely a solution. So I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing and then what you can do if you'd like to join us. So um, we've already had our introductions. I'm going to show you a little bit about the local education landscape, um, a little bit of data background, and then an overview of the project and what kind of content we're doing um, on public media and then how you can get involved. So today we're going to talk about how best do we use, or answer these two questions, how best do we use public media to highlight and expand on those solutions that are in the community already or being attempted, and how you can participate. One of our pro uh, partners on this program is the UNM Center for Education Policy Research, and they have done a great deal of data gathering around um, various educational indicators in the landscape. I'm just going to show you a few of these maps. There's a lot. They can all be found um, through a link on our webpage, the American Graduate webpage from uh, NewMexicoPBS.org. So this is what our four-year high school graduation rate actually looks like. Um, four of our high schools have less than a 60% graduation rate. In the nation, 51% of the nation's dropouts come from those kinds of schools which have less than a 60% graduation rate. So you will see, here's West Mesa, there's Rio Grande. This is Atrisco Heritage. Um, he didn't have enough data to give us the four-year uh, graduation cohort there. Um, Perky High Highland, there's Volcano Vista, La Cueva, Cibola. So it's, it's divided by uh, um, school boundaries. Uh, this is not brand new information. This is also not from CBER. Um, just to give you an idea of the difference between, if you look at the bottom, the difference between um, 2008 salaries of those with less than a high school diploma, and this is a weekly salary, high school diploma, some college, but no degree, and obviously heading on up. So it, we all know that it's important economically for students to graduate with a high school diploma. There's a few early warning indicators that have been identified by CEPR, and they're pretty much generally accepted. Um, students entering ninth grade with two or more F grades in core subjects are more likely to drop out. Um, the, the areas in red have greater than 15% of students entering with two or more F grades, and the area in green is less than 5%. Ten or more absences in eighth grade entering ninth grade is another indicator, so truancy. Um, I am told that this is actually excused absences, so this is probably um, a little bit skewed data, but um, those areas in red are greater than 40% of the students have ten or more absences when they're entering ninth grade, and none of this is good news. The yellow is 20 to 30%, this, these two is 20, 30 to 30 percent of the students have uh, greater than 10 absences. This is the data for one or more F grades or five or more absences, and um, again, there's not very much good news here. There is no green, which would be less than 5 percent, 5 to 10 percent is <coughs> light yellow, and then greater than 15 percent is uh, the red areas. So. Kids that have both two or more F grades and ten or more uh, absences. And that's less than 5% in the green areas and then greater than 15% in the red. So that's pretty much what the landscape looks like. Middle school kids also can be habitually truant. Habitually means ten or more absences. And so this is based on um, 
middle school boundaries. The green is less than 5%, so there's some good news in middle school at least. Uh, greater than 20% are these red ones. By habitual truancy, it's pretty much pervasive. La Cueva is the only school that has very little problem. Um, the orange schools, Volcano Vista, El Dorado, Sandia, that's 10 to 20%, and greater than 20% is all of these. So greater than 20% of the kids are habitually truant. And just to give you the demographic landscape, this is the number of enrollments of Hispanic students in our uh, schools. And so these darker blue are 80 to 100 percent Hispanic students. These lighter blue here, Highland, I think, is the only one that's 60 to 80 percent. 40 to 60 percent here in Manzano, Volcano Vista, Cibola, Albuquerque, and then 10 to 20 percent La Cueva and El Dorado. Free or reduced price lunch eligibility, which is an indicator of uh, poverty, family poverty. Uh, 80 to 100 percent here in Trisco Heritage and Rio Grande. West Mesa, 60 to 80 percent are eligible for free and reduced price lunch. La Cueva, less than 20. 20 to 40 is this white area. And then Valley High Schools, 40 to 60 percent are eligible for free and reduced price lunch. Some other indicators, middle school students at home not, um, middle school students not involved in group activities outside school or home, and these are again our middle school boundaries. The red is about 43%, the green is about 12 to 18%, so there's a lot of students not doing anything outside of school. This is the percent of high school students not involved in group activities outside of school or home. Um, pretty much... This is 63 to 40%, greater than 40. Less than 30% is the green one. And this is the percentage of high school students not involved in school activities, like clubs or sports. And again, I don't know if it's because they're not offered or they're just not signing up, but all of these are, um, almost 40% of students are not involved in activities. Another indicator, students who have reported not having an adult outside of home or school who cares about them. Mm -hmm. This is where mentoring is an important thing. The Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and other organizations, YDI, that do mentoring. 11.4 um, to 14.4 percent of the students here in the red areas report not having an adult outside of home or school who cares about them. <coughs> This is a percentage of students not having a parent or adult at home who is interested in their schoolwork. It's not as huge as it looks. The colors are very bright, but the red is just um, 7 to 10 percent. So most students report that somebody at home cares about what, how they're doing at school. The percentage of students report not having a teacher or some adult at school who cares about them is a little greater. The red areas are about 17 percent, the green between 10 and 12 percent. So there's no less than 10 percent that report that there's nobody at school, no teacher, no adult that really cares about them as an individual. So our action plan is to be a public media station, to do stuff on air, online, web, social media, and advertising, and in the community, which is collaborations and partnerships with community members. Part of that is going to be youth-generated media, and we're working with Generation Justice, who does KUNM Youth Radio, to do that. We do a lot of teacher professional development, so giving them technology tools to use in the classroom to engage their students more. And we're doing uh, research with CBER, Center for Education Policy Research, and a teacher town hall where we want to hear from at least 100 teachers on April 18th. That will be televised about a week later. So here's what our on-air content looks like. Our public square programs, which are hour-long episodes where we bring uh, people in from the community that are not usually heard from. Um, these include the Im Improving Graduation Rates in the South Valley, which is a, a local group of people who talk about 
how things are going, including um, people from APS and CNM. But the team dropout crisis there, we had the teams come in and talk about how, what their experiences with dropping out, going back, and what the barriers were. One of the barriers, obviously, is teen pregnancy. And it's hard to stay in school when you're a teen parent. In February, we broadcast one on teen opiate and heroin addiction, which is also a, a pretty bad problem in our area. That has to be the heaviest program that I've been involved with. Um, we are also doing a New Mexico and Focus series of short subjects, and we've done a few already. We're got, we have ten more to do. So the first one we did was a profile of the, um, the director of our state charter school, Robert Beatty. Then we highlighted citizen schools. And you can watch any of these programs, uh, these little shorts, or these programs on our website at um, newmexicopbs.org. We also did a little profile in Next Gen High School, which is an APS magnet school, and talked to some of the students who said, you know, if I didn't go here, I probably would have dropped out. Gordon Burmell Charter School, we just were in, that is the charter high school inside the detention center. So it's in the prison. We have 10 more to go, and we will be doing four half-hour segments about a little more in depth about what's going on in our community. So our media campaign, we'll be um, doing advertising tips um, about early warning, warning signs for parents, teams are talking to teens about why it's important not to drop out, and we'll be doing print media in our Ventana, which is our monthly program guide. Look, my source spots on all four of our channels, including Spanish on the May Public Television. Um, then we'll be doing online media. Our website is building. We're using social media, of course, Twitter and Facebook. Then, because we, uh, some of the audience that we want to reach is not necessarily watching PBS and Downton Abbey, we will be buying time on other media. <laughs> so we'll be doing radio spots on stations that teens listen to, both in English and in Spanish, and on Comcast. And on Casa Fox TV. Um, research has told us that a lot of the, the um, families we want to reach will be reached by these two buys. And we're using the grant funds from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting to do that. We also have the, our online digital engagement strategy, and here is our website. If you just go to New Mexico PBS and click on Educate, you'll be able to get There's a button on the front page for American Graduate. And that's what the web page looks like. Each one of these little uh, segments here, if you click on these, you can watch our video. These are little short, like less than 10 minute segments. And then further down on the page are the uh, public square programs, which are much longer. But just watching the little trailer, the intros to those, will give you an idea of what, what's the content. Well, can you go back, please? Yes. That, I'm sorry, this is just a little side thing. That donate up there, what is that? Oh, that's, oh, I'm sorry. That's for um, New Mexico PBS. It's on every page. Oh. Isn't it on every one of your pages? Not yet. And um, also part of our work in the community is doing teacher workshops. And I've been in a lot of schools lately showing them New Mexico PBS Learning Media, which is 16,000 online learning assets, which include videos, interactives, lesson plans, photographs, all kinds of interesting things, pre-K through 13 plus, to use in the classroom with teachers and students. Also, there's teacher professional development on uh, inside PBS Learning Media. And uh, right now we have about 350 teachers signed up. It's a free service. And the more I get out and, and show teachers this, the more people get excited about it. This has been proven as one way to keep students engaged by using technology in the classroom. As I mentioned before, we're doing the teacher town hall on April 18th. It'll be from 5.30 to 7.30 in UNM Continuing Education. If you know teachers, who have a thought about how to deal with the dropout crisis, and I know they all do. We'd love to have them join us. I want a minimum of 100 teachers in this town hall. So I'm happy to send invitations to anyone who can pass them around. It's partially funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that just this aspect of our project. We want a minimum of 100 teachers. We have a survey that we have the teachers fill out when they first register because we want them to set the agenda, what's on their minds, what they think is uh, most important to talk about. Laura, I'm yes. sorry. Can you go back two slides? Uh -huh. <laughs> it took, it, 
just of the online education back. Yes. So a kid can do this online? No, teachers can do this. Teachers can do this yes. online. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a custom service that costs $500 a school where teachers and students can have accounts. Oh. What happens with this is that teachers set up a class account. Their students can log into just their class um, materials, but they, they can't search and browse the whole service. They can? No. Just teachers can do that. So but, if I wanted to mm -hmm. establish an after-school program here mm -hmm. uh, for kids down the street, yeah. Could I do that using my labs? Sure, you could. And I can uh, come over and help you oh, show yes, you how to do it. You. Yes, I'll invite you lunch. Sure. <laughs> Teachers can set up um, their own class page. They can um, give assignments to their students. They can save materials. They can say, okay, look at this video, write this up by tomorrow, and they can put all that information into their class page. Wow. There's a, special, I need a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> there's a special URL that the students will log in and then they can see what their assignment is and you will have chosen the materials for them. Right. So the only thing the students can't do is dig around in the service and find their own materials. You, you assign them what you want them to see. And that's in the free service. There's a, other levels of service that cost, but the free service is pretty comprehensive, I think. Okay, so back to the teacher town hall. We're going to be do, doing cell phone text polling during the event. This is a first for us, but I think it'll be fun. Um, and we'll start polling the teachers about a week out. And this is going to be also offered for broadcast to PBS NewsHour. We're going to be recruiting teachers every way we can, but also <coughs> um, on air spots by our general manager, Polly Anderson, and through all of our partners in the community, and there are lots, and we're hoping you are too. Our moderator will be Ray Suarez of the PBS News Hour. Well, I have um, two questions. One um, is the actual town hall partially funded by the Bill Gates Foundation, yes. or and are they also partially funding the American Graduate Program? They're just funding the, the town, town hall. hall. Town hall, okay. Yeah. And are you looking for teachers specifically only in high school? Or teachers in middle school? Any teachers. School, any teachers. Okay. I think even kindergarten teachers have an idea of how to keep kids from dropping out. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that believe that if you're not ready to read when you get into kindergarten, you're likely to drop out. So mm -hmm. I think any teachers who are willing to speak up and have thoughts about this, we should hear from. Yeah, any age group. At first, you know, CPB had said middle and high school, but I know a lot of really dynamic elementary school <laughs> teachers. I want to hear from them, too. The whole continuum. Yeah, absolutely. It is a continuum. So now we get to the good part. You guys, how can you participate if you want to? One thing you could do would be to underwrite our on-air American graduate campaign spots. So those spots that say, one of the ways that you can help a student graduate is to mentor them or are, is your child missing more than five days of school or getting more than one F in core subjects? Chances are, you know, so some tip spots, those kinds of things. Or even teams talking to teams. This spot is underwritten by, and that would go on to the, all of the other uh, media besides ours, too. You can become a sponsor of the American Graduate Teacher Town Hall. We hope to feed all these teachers as well as bring them into the studio. And you would get all of the credit that you ordinarily would get for um, sponsoring. So you'd get on-air credit when we do the, um, the broadcast as well as in person during the teacher town hall. And on the website and uh, on our American Graduate site. We are having community <coughs> conversations. The next one is at 1 o'clock on March 21st at the United Way. Some of you have attended some of these. Um, I have about 30 people so far signed up for that one to talk about what's going on in the community and what the community wants us to communicate. Being public media, we should not be figuring out ourselves what the messages are, but hearing it from you all. So that's why we want to hear from the community. So we're gathering community in various ways at various times. Or you could volunteer to be our on-air spokesperson in one of our campaign spots. So you could be the person saying, here's a way to keep your kids from dropping out of school. And we could put you on air. You could serve on an advisory group to give us some more advice about the best way to use public media on air, online, and in the community. You could invite some of our youth media makers to visit your business or to interview you. That, this would be really fun, I think, to get your take on 
why the dropout crisis affects your business, how it affects the community, what you think can be done about it, what your business wants to see happen, and what your business is doing as, as part of your community commitment. So um, I can put you in touch with um, Generation Justice, and they'll send out their, their young people who are getting pretty good at vlogging and blogging and videotaping and doing radio spots and interviews, and so it's, it's a really fun aspect of this project. Other things you can do, you could be a big brother, a big sister, you could join Junior Achievement. Depends on what kind of time commitment you would like to make. Big brothers, big sisters is not as big of a time commitment as you would think. Four hours a month, a couple of movies, a ball game or two. You could sponsor technology training for teachers. Almost all of our technology training for the PBS Learning Media is um, sponsored by local businesses. It's paid for by local businesses. So that's helpful always. And here is my contact information if you want to get in touch. Anybody have any other questions, ideas, comments, or advice for me? What does sponsoring a town hall entail? Um, if you sponsor a town hall uh, for about $5,000, you will be um, acknowledged in person to all the teachers. We'll have banners for you in the continuing ed auditorium. There will also be um, acknowledgement of your business on air when we broadcast um, and on the American Graduate website and where the, um, we're going to archive also the, um, all of the um, <coughs> teacher town hall on our website so people can watch that video. <coughs> Other questions? Yes? Just a comment. I think um, in, in your presentation you had some charter schools. Yes. Um, we created those charter schools for the dropout rate mm -hmm. and to create smaller learning communities for students. Yes. Um, and so, and yeah. Um, and I think school districts have looked at those schools as competition okay. um, as opposed to helping the dropout rate. Um, there are students that need a smaller learning community in order to stay in school. They are needy students. Um, you know, they are, uh, if you looked at the area where Rio Grande, where I graduated from, yeah. um, there are a lot of needs in, in those areas. and. Um, both parents are working, or it's a single parent family, like what I came out of. Yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, that's one thing. The other thing is that I don't believe that our schools have equity um, in our public schools of what I had when I went to high school. There were activity buses, so we could stay after school and be involved in, in activities. <coughs> they don't have those anymore. Um, we had a nurse in every school. There are no nurses in every school anymore. Um, so, you know, I think, I think those kinds of things um, are really important to keep kids in school yeah. um, other than just the academic part of learning. Because if a student doesn't feel good about themselves or doesn't have a way to let out energy or um, interact with other peers, it's very difficult for them to stay in school. Um, and very few students are doing that these days because they don't have a way to get home. I, I have heard in a lot of quarters that transportation is a huge issue. It's huge. It's, it's really big. And um, there, I've heard even from elementary school schools that um, kids are going home and hanging out by themselves and that's where the teen pregnancy problem and the drug problem comes from. There's not enough... Um, not enough safe places to yeah. be after school. And that's kind of an obvious thing that you always see as a school bus, sure. but you never really think further than that on how um, those students that ride those buses, that's the only way they can get to school. Right. And so those are the kids, I think a lot of them, if you ever did a survey, a lot of them would probably be the ones that drop out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have two questions sort of follow up to your point around the uh, Equity. Hello, Wells Fargo Board Group. Just put it through, thank you. Marsha, we were missing you. Oh, sorry guys, I got sidetracked with the thing this morning. Okay. Alright, you're on, everybody's listening, somebody's talking. 
Okay. Yeah, the question on some of your charts there uh, in the higher red areas. Yes. Are you able to capture, or can you capture students who have to work? I am very familiar with uh, some of the, the South Valley school, schools. Attendance is a reflection of having to work many hours uh -huh. to put money in the household mm -hmm. so we can survive. Right. Thus, the missing school, thus the yeah. involvement activities going on. So yeah. I'm not sure you're capturing that, but that should be looked at uh -huh. in that regard, and how that can be fixed or addressed as well. You know, I'm not sure that um, it was Tina Winograd and Angelo uh, Gonzalez who do the data gathering. And I asked them a few questions about that, too, about what are the reasons for the truancy. And um, they said that they could not get at the reasons um, from the data that was available from APS. However, the public square program that they did, that we did, where we invited the young people into the studio, several of them said that the reason they had to drop out was so they could go to work, so they could pay for that car and drive their siblings to school, um, or you know they dropped out to go to work, or they couldn't keep work and school going, or they missed a lot. So that that was discussed at you know anecdotally, people, uh, students said this is my issue. But we don't know how much of the truancy data is related to students who have to work. Um, and that would be something I can ask them to see if they can capture. I know they'll be doing more and more updates and more data as, as time goes by. Um, Albuquerque Business Education Compact has contracted with CEPR to do a lot of this work. So some of the original maps that I have were what they did for ABEC. And um, I think it would be good to know why is it so why um, is there so much truancy? Are the kids, you know, not healthy because there's not a good nurse, or are the kids they don't care, or is there gang-related activity, or you know, what uh, what are the reasons for truancy? I think would be important to capture. And the follow-up question would be: You had a chart in there around uh, a slide that showed students feeling that teachers aren't don't care about them or something yeah, to that effect? Yeah, it was the uh, percentage of students who feel like there's no teacher or other adult at school who cares about them. Is there a correlation to student population? It's the size of the high school. Exactly. I would agree. If you're so yeah. large, mm -hmm. how do you as an administrator or teacher interact effectively with 50 kids versus 10 yeah. kids? Yeah. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But I'm and the flip of that too, as a child them. or a student, how do you feel you can approach if you're in a pool of 100 people versus uh -huh. a pool of 10? Well, if you have a teacher that has 30 students every period, five or six periods a day, that's a lot of students. Yeah. And again, some of the kids that we had in the studio said, School size, class size. It just, just it's not working for me to be in a class this That's minute. why charter schools were created. Yeah. That's why we created those. Yes. Because there are students that function better in a smaller learning environment. Definitely. I thought it was interesting on that slide, though, because La Cueva, which had mostly positive things, had the intermediate, the, yeah. you know, it wasn't in the smallest category for that. So yeah. it's interesting to see and to think out. about why bring it back up. that may be. Is it that they have more support at home? I don't know. So that was that's the one. And that's the slide. I think it's also, it's also a function of uh, um, of economical status of the families. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, if you look at the same map, and um, this is among the maps that um, Peter and Angelo created our um, income demographic data, that it aligns. It, it aligns with almost all of these, especially for your graduate, uh, graduation. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I've been exposed to, in the education arena, both in the higher socioeconomic environment as well as the lower socioeconomic environment. You do find lack of wanting to continue with education in any socioeconomic environment, period. However, those in the higher socioeconomic environments, parents are able to afford extended learning opportunities yes. to motivate the students to continue extracurricular activities that can be motivated. I think everyone actually does um, uh, benefit from smaller learning environments in general. I mean, we see 
in the university level, we do prefer to have a, a classroom of only 20 students versus 300 just sitting in for a lecture. Um, I'm wondering, because I know um, myself working in both a public school uh, environment with a lower socioeconomic school, we didn't have as much staff to be able to call the parents to find out where the students were as the higher socioeconomic high school had. They had some more funding that was provided to them um, to provide that program. I'm also just curious, because I'm new to APS's um, legalities, do they um, uh, put the parents responsible for the student if the student leaves the school and misses due to working or because of a family situation? In some school districts outside the state, the parents are actually um, called by the police yeah. and they're on arrest. They get arrested because yeah. it's against the law in some states to hold your child back and not have them continue for a full day program. Does anyone know? The district attorney yes. will not. We, we turn cases over by the hundreds to the district attorney. They don't. So it's in the d district attorney's mm -hmm. hands, not in the school district's hands. Correct. Okay. It's our, it's our truancy law in Mexico. Okay. Well, thank you. We're going to have to move on. And uh, Sharon Tenario is not here today, but she's the one who really uh, wanted uh, a lot to bring this forward. So she turned up sick this morning, sent me an email first thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will so actually. I think our next her. short subject is going to be about Big Brother. That's great. It's just amazing that there's the, actual, the there? no activity in the area seems to really resonate on on the problem. So. Okay. Well, thank you. I want to uh, have everyone just initial your sign in if you're.